I would next like to welcome, I apologize, I called it a podium before, this is a lectern. Shame upon me. And shame upon you for not immediately calling me out. I'd like to call our next author to the lectern, Paul Sigourney. Titled Fuzzy the Bear's Big Day by Paul Sigourney. Fuzzy Rumpkins was the snuggliest teddy bear in Cuddlefart Junction. He had cute, shiny black eyes that danced when he laughed, which meant that they danced all the time. He had a nose that was cute as a button, which was only partly due to the fact that it was an actual button. He had soft, fuzzly arms that hugged eagerly, without hesitation, and for just long enough, which in Cuddlefart Junction was as long as you need. And he had that most important of teddy bear features, a fluffy tummy filled with blood. It's a soft place where frowns and sads go to die. He would always giggle just before wrapping another friend in a lovey hugaboo which was the mostest specialist hug from his deep repertoire of hug types. But beyond all these wonderful things, Fuzzy Rumpkins had a butt filled with farts. And in Cuddlefart Junction, that was the most important thing for a teddy bear to have. Because each fourth year on July the Happy Teeth, every teddy bear in the land gathers round in the Junction Square for the big farting contest to determine the supreme bear. Today was July the Happy Team, and Fuzzy Rumpkins had just turned five, which meant he was finally old enough to compete. Fuzzy imagined himself sitting on the Supreme Bear throne, eating all the candy he wished, anytime he wanted, with nobody to tell him that he couldn't. He'd be a good Supreme Bear, he thought. He'd share his candy with all his teddy bear friends, and he'd give them important jobs, like Jasmine Windy Poops who sat next to him in the bear school. She could run the department of lovely thoughts. His kindly next door neighbor, Tubby Underbump. He could be in charge of the strategic lollipop preserve. And all of Fuzzy's other school friends too. Timmy Biscuit Hams, Boo Boo Jam Tarts, Aromatic Billy, and even Little Flower Bottom, who was only two. They could all live in the Supreme Bear Palace with them, and they would just play and play and play. Why, even Dutchman the Outsider, who wasn't a bear at all, but an old human man who lived in a hut way out past the fluff barns and the lactose fields. He always seemed grumpy, and he smelled like the Netherlands. But he gave Fluffy a quarter once for helping him bust up an old shipper road. And sometimes, when deep in his cups, he would come to Fuzzy's door and talk for hours about the best hard candies from a place called Utrecht. <laughs> yes, even Dutchman the Outsider would be welcome. In fact, Fuzzy realized that he'd need a good king's contrivance, and perhaps Dutchman the Outsider was the perfect man for the job. But Fuzzy knew that before the palace and the play and the government appointments, First must come the farting. He always got the straight A's in farting class. And he'd been captain of the farting team at school for over a year. And while there were lots of great farters on the team, sweet beefs, bam bam biscuit hams, pants coughing Winslow, and even the fart goalie, Brown Casper, they all knew that Fuzzy was the best of the bunch. As he walked slowly and determinedly towards the junction square for the start of the contest, Fuzzy Rumpkins knew three things. He knew he would have to believe in himself. He knew that it would take his greatest effort ever if he were to stand a chance against Turk Cutter Wumbles, <laughs> the winner of the past four contests and current Supreme Bear. And he knew that he had a secret advantage over everybody else, the handful of magic beans in the right front pocket of his overalls, beans that he had gotten from the old tree wizard who lived deep in the darkest part of Gumdrop Forest, where most bears dared not go. 
beings that the old tree wizard had given to Fuzzy in exchange for his soul. 